Jasmine, thank you for leading us into worship. Let's pray as we begin this time. Heavenly Father, for the blessings of this day, for your people joined in worship, we pray that you would bless each one with us, those who are watching virtually. Lord, let this time be pleasing to you, and may it strengthen your people. Bless each one, touch us at our places of need, and draw us heavenward through this time together, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And more, good morning, everyone. Virtually just wanted to welcome you, greet those who are here with us. Today uh, is our communion message. This is the first Sunday of April, and we will be sharing communion this morning. So if you're at home, if you would gather some bread and some juice, uh, there'll be a time at the end of the service where you can share in that part with us. And if you have to improvise, um, we've had a lot of stories throughout uh, the past couple of years on uh chips and uh, coke and things like that so uh, bread and juice is still traditional but we'll get to the communion later so please take a chance to get prepared you can pause and wait and or just uh, be ready so uh, we are going to sing our first hymn our only hymn this morning number 153 worthy of worship jasmine's going to lead us we're going to stand join with us at home as you know the words worthy of worship and praise hymn 153 Jasmine, thank you again for leading us into worship and for each of you for being here with us um, and virtually as well. It's great to be with you today. Our scripture passage is found in the book of 1 Corinthians this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to be talking about the communion service and the first Sunday of the month is our traditional communion service anyway. But when did the communion service become a part of an active church service? Last week during Holy Week, we know the first Lord's Supper took place on that Wednesday night, uh, the Passover feast. 
which is now communion for us uh, who, are, who are Christian. And, um, but why is it in church service? We see that it took place, and we only have one passage in the entire Bible that really speaks about this with any instruction. It's found in 1 Corinthians. Let me read this, verse, this chapter for you, and we'll go from there. These are the exact verses teaching on communion, starting in 22. For I received from the Lord what I have also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he, he, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. And we pray that the Lord would add his blessings to the reading of his word. Those verses are the only instructive verses in the New Testament about how to take communion with it being part of a worship service. So we're going to look at the history of communion and how it became so central into our services, why we do this, and Paul's got some other directives we're going to look at as well. But before we get there, we are going to pray once again, and we'll close by saying the Lord's Prayer together. So if you want to follow me along at home, that would be great. And uh, let's bow now before the throne of grace as we pray. Heavenly Father, again, your people humble themselves and come before you asking for your blessings on our hearts, our lives, our families, our church, our country, and Lord, indeed, our world. On this, the Sunday after Easter, we continue to celebrate your resurrection, not just in a season, but each and every time we gather. And today, around the communion table, we remember the events of last week. We remember your sacrifice for your people, and we continue to rejoice. In this time of rejoicing and celebration, we pray for mindfulness to remember also those who are hurting, those in need of physical relief from illness or injuries, those looking for mental release with stress, depression, anxiety, so many things that play upon our hearts and our minds. And Lord, we also pray for spiritual awareness because you are the great physician and we come to you for your healing touch physically, emotionally, and spiritually that you would renew your people and revive your people and let it be so today. Again, thanking you for your word and our time together. Let your people, wherever they might be, join together with our voices as we pray the way that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now we look again into God's word. I'm calling the title of the message today, Communion Central, because we know that in the events of Holy Week, right before Christ was crucified, that the Lord's Supper came into being. Um, it was originally the Passover feast, but the Lord changed that with his disciples on that Wednesday night before his crucifixion. But we found out in the book of 1 Corinthians that the Lord's Supper was a part of their worship service, and this book was probably written sometime in the mid to late 50s A.D., so roughly 20 years after Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, we see in local churches that they are practicing uh, the aspect of continuing the Lord's Supper in a tradition where he is remembered and glorified with that. Now, as Paul is writing here in 1 Corinthians, it actually this section starts off a little bit earlier and uh, he goes right into the meat of it. He says, you need some help. You're not doing this the right way. And it reminds me of when I was in college in a speech class, people would get up, they would give a speech, and 
our teacher said was time after a speech to critique what you heard, but you must always say something kind and nice before you offer any form of criticism. And if you finish giving your speech and someone raised their hand and said, you know, that's a nice looking suit you have on, you know you're in trouble because that's the only thing they could come up to say that was nice and it was going to go downhill from there. Paul didn't say anything nice to begin with. There was no compliment going on as he starts in verse 17. He goes, in the following directives, I have no praise for you. Your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you gather as a church, there's divisions among you. And to some extent, I believe it to be true. No doubt there have been differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. When you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you cuts in line ahead of the others, not waiting for anyone. One remains hungry. Some become drunk. He said, don't you have homes to eat in and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? Certainly not. That's how Paul started this particular section, talking about the Last Supper or Communion Sunday. People were cutting in lines. Now, we usually serve the elements to people out in the congregation. Sometimes we have people come forward to the table to take them. But I've never seen anyone cut in line. I've never seen someone abuse that privilege. But what we see here is that when God has given us something, that we as people can find a way to manipulate it and make it worthless. And here, because of arrogance, greed, whatever it might be, a lack of humility, certainly, people had been abusing the communion or the Last Supper, breaking in line, eating all the food. People probably brought food in that day and time to be a part of the meal rather than just having the bread in the cup as we do. And the ones who brought the most ate the most. And says so some went home hungry because they didn't have anything to bring. Some drank all the communion cups. Probably not a cup like we have, much more like a goblet. And um, says, this is not right. I'm going to tell you how to do this because people found a way to mess up what God had intended for good. That's a repeating story throughout creation. Even today, we find those same situations in our life. But today, we're looking at the communion, and this is what had happened. Shall I praise you for this? Certainly not. And then we get the directive. For I received from the Lord what I have also passed on to you, that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And then we see these words added. We don't see this in the gospel, only here in 1 Corinthians. Do this in remembrance of me. And as we are remembering, it calls to life all the events of Holy Week, that original Passover, that original Lord's Supper, the uh, betrayal by Judas to give Jesus over to the high priest, his arrest, his, his torment that he went through, his crucifixion, the day of agony on Saturday where nothing was going on. And on Sunday, the ladies went to the tomb. Just as we talked about last week, they went there to anoint the body, but Christ was alive. He is risen and he still is today. We remember those events from a historical fashion, but also an internal personal fashion when we take the bread and drink the cup. We show forth the Lord's death. That is the power of our life in Christ. Everything hinged on the events of last Sunday. If the tomb were still full, we would not be worshiping our Lord today. But because it's empty, we can have fullness of life, and we celebrate that through the communion opportunity. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Not an old covenant, not one made better, not one tweaked, but a brand new covenant because his blood now is the blood of the sacrificial lamb from the Passover feast. His blood is the reason we have forgiveness as Christians, as believers. And when we drink this cup, we remember the forgiveness that we have received and appreciate in our lives. And whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. For when we eat the bread and drink the cup, 
we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he returns, saying this is our power. This is our standing point. This is why we worship the risen Lord right here. And that's the whole key. It's not about cutting in line. It's not about actually eating and drinking. It's remembering and showing God's power forth in our lives as we do this together. Now, some people have taken this literally and say, oh, we're only supposed to do, we should do the communion every time we have a worship service. Others have said, no, we do it on a monthly basis. We do it every other week. Uh, some go, even go once a quarter. In my tradition growing up, we did it on the fifth Sunday night of the month. Now, there's usually four or five months per year where there are five Sundays. Just like last month in March, Easter was the fifth Sunday. Uh, so that would, be, that would have been a communion uh, night in our church, and we would enjoy the communion at that time. Whenever we do these things, though, we remember what God is doing. And during the mud season here in Vail, which officially starts in about a week or so, uh, two weeks from today, Vail closes. Next week, Beaver Creek closes. So we're pretty close to mud season anyway. But when you're here, we'd love to have you come and worship with us. We're going to have the communion every week uh, until Father's Day just because we tend to have limited crowds at this, at this time of year. Then it's uh, two or three where we're gathered. We come around the table. We eat and drink together. It's a great way to worship when the group is smaller like that. So as you're in town, we'd love to have you come and be with us for communion and worship because we meet every Sunday, uh, even during this time. But the reason we do that is because Christ is alive and well. We're living today as a result of what he did in the past and how his Holy Spirit is impressing that upon us each and every day of our life now in the present. And then we look forward to sharing all things again with him in eternity future when all people, all believers are gathered around the throne. But those are his directives to us in this, to uh, do this in remembrance of what the Lord is doing. So if you have bread and a cup at home, um, water, wine, juice, milk, something of that nature, go ahead and grab that now. I'll give you just a second because in a moment I'm going to go up to the table and take the bread and the cup and come back down and do some explanations and we're going to eat and drink together. So take a moment and go grab that while I gather our elements from here. serve and uh, here's what he said the Lord on the night he was betrayed took bread and after he blessed it he broke it and he gave these pieces to his disciples and he said take and eat this is my body given for you this bread that was used in Passover for 2,000 years plus has now been turned into represent the body of Christ given for us so whatever you have a piece of bread or whatever Go ahead and break it so you see it's not in one piece. And remember, this is the Lord's body given for us, and then take and eat of the bread of life. And in the same way, after the supper, the Lord took the cup probably a goblet, a larger cup than what we use. And he said, this cup is now the new covenant in my blood. The cup 
in the Old Testament represented the anointing of God, the blood of the sacrificial lamb. In the original Passover, Israel was told to take a lamb and sacrifice it for purity, and then take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost of your house, over the front door, covering both sides and the crossbeam as well. And when that last plague came on Egypt, the, the death of the firstborns, the Passover angel would see the blood, or the death angel would see the blood and pass over. That's how the term Passover came into being. So the cup, the blood of the lamb, has always been central in the Passover. Christ took that and said, we're not making this better, we're making it new. This is now the new covenant in my blood given for you. And when you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. So if you're at home right now, please take your cup, join with us, and drink from the cup of the new covenant. And bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the bread and the cup and pray your blessings upon each one as we have taken again of your body and your blood. We remember your sacrifice. We remember your death. We remember your resurrection. The celebration of last week is fresh upon our hearts and minds. And today, we live in the same thoughts and power that you gave on that first resurrection Sunday. Lord, bless your people in communion. Let us walk in newness of life for your honor and glory and for the blessings of your people, thanking you for the gift of the table and communion with one another. We ask this blessing upon each one in Jesus' name. Amen. So I do want to thank you for coming out and being a part of the communion today. Uh, we will worship again next Sunday, and we look forward to seeing you then. If you're in town with us, we're always going to be here. And, uh, looking forward to those times together. But Jasmine, thank you for being here and to each one of you. So now I just pray a concluding blessing on you and say, May the Lord our God, Heavenly Father, bless you and keep you. May he make his face to smile upon you. And may he direct our paths unto his righteousness for his honor and glory. As we as people go forward because of all that Christ has done. And Lord Jesus, your people thank you and praise you, asking now that your Holy Spirit fill our heart to bless your people and to become a blessing to others. Let us go now in the peace of Christ that passes all understanding for the betterment of his kingdom and life here on earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for each of these blessings. In your holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Go in the peace of the Lord. We look forward to seeing you when you're with us. Have a great Sunday. Bye now.